Yeah, so I'm Bruce McKenzie. I've been with the Mars Society since its beginning. I've also been very active in the National Space Society. And um, years ago in Space Studies Institutes and said, and I also founded the Mars Foundation in the Mars University. Um, and let me see if, so, and uh, we're joined with Colin Lutz, Cole, and uh, a lot of these images were made by other people as well. So, all right, so, um, um, settling Mars, it, a lot of people have worked on um, various technologies. Some people have, you know, proposed large cities. There's been, it's actually been due to contest by the Mars Society, there's actually been a fair bit of work on whole cities on Mars. But I want to concentrate on how to get that initial base started, which is what we did. Set, we, we worked on several proposals within the Mars Foundation and the Mars Society. But the advent of Starship really changes things. It makes it a lot simpler. So, um, and um, this is really a time of change for the Mars settlement community. We, uh, Elon Musk has allowed us to come out of the closet and um, um, it's, it's now publicly talked about and there's some really nice images coming out as well. So um, some of this work grew out of, of the, uh, the settlement designs, we've seen these images, great big domes, uh, crowded cities, but you know, how do you get the first few, the first settlements started? Um, and they, that's often overlooked. So what I'm gonna show you is some ideas of how to use starships when they first land, how to outfit them and use them when you're there. And also, um, uh, turn them sideways and live in them. And if I have time, I'll, I'll mention some things about um, uh, space elevators and larger um, like city park like things. Uh, let me digress for the first few um, slides. And I wanna make sure everybody understands the, re the reasons we wanna settle space or Mars is, is, is just to break out from the earth, um, spread civilization, spread life, um, uh, allow the next generation to, re to realize that there's much more available in this universe than just the earth. And also if we learn to manage ecosystems throughout multiple st space settlements, we might have a better chance of managing the earth ecosystem. So I think settlement of space might save the earth. Um, those of you who have not seen the orbital settlements, please go check out SSI.org. Jerry O'Neill really inspired me with the space cities. There's, we can build millions of cities in orbit, and someday um, there could be trillions of people of the, living in space. The population of these space settlements could be thousands of times larger than the populations of Earth and Mars combined. So check out SSI.org, please. Um, I became convinced that the reason to that the place to start settlement of space is on Mars because you can grow food there with the water, you can grow food there with the carbon, and there's even nitrogen for fertilizer. There's other advantages too, like you can use the carbon to make uh, plastics, you can use the water for industrial processing. It's easier to get volatiles by pumping them out of the, the atmosphere. But the main reason is just it's, it's the second best place to grow food after the Earth. Okay, getting into starships. Um, we have to keep in mind that the starship is evolving. There's five different earlier proposals for the starship in the upper left. Um, there's, there also will be variations of it. Um, in the lower right in the middle is a cargo door that looks like a giant alligator with its jaw ready to eat you. And I propose that we really need specialized vehicles, variations of starships and other vehicles specialized to the different phases of travel to Mars. So you might have one, say a starship for launching from Earth, but a different starship that is much more comfortable to live in for the six to eight months traveling to Mars. You might have a starship as an orbital fuel depot around Mars. You might have a different craft for shuttling people up and down from Mars, each specialized. 
And would, can you confirm that you can read the last line, trans Mars, from Mars to Earth? I cannot read it on my screen. Okay, I think we, I think my screen is not registered properly. Yeah, yeah um, I could, about half of the line showed. Uh, the okay. Top, top, right, that, top half, it was readable just barely. Okay, yeah, that's too bad. We had that trouble before the meeting too. And don't forget, there's a, uh, we show a picture of a starship, you know, taking off on a little bunny hop near Boca Chica and landing on Mars. But don't forget, there's a, there's a, um, a booster, a, a very large first stage that has to get it off from the Earth. It, it'll be expensive. It'll take a lot of fuel. So it's not just this, quote, little starship. It's, it's an even bigger system. And it'll take several of these flights to refuel the starship. So there, there is a minimum cost um, to, get to, to, to get a starship to Mars. So um, people show starships landing on, on Mars, but we have to first um, make sure it can get there, make sure it can get back, uh, make sure the version that we take to Mars can get back to Earth. So I would propose that we do not land on Mars as soon as we are ready, but instead we take a cargo version of the Starship and fly by Mars and release smaller spacecraft and then have the main Starship return to Earth as quickly as possible, get ready for its next flight. And it might deploy uh, communication and navigation satellites, more, more imaging satellite. We could deploy a lot of rovers at say about three different sites and uh, confirm, you know, uh, confirm that those sites are possible, help, help us pick the best site. Um, and let's see. So um, anyway, peep, um, it's not widely known, but the Starship cannot deliver its full cargo anywhere on Mars. It needs enough air to slow down. So to deliver its full cargo, it can only land at fairly low elevations, which means the Northern Hemisphere or Hellas Basin down in the lower right. Um, luckily, Hellas is pretty low and there's some ice deposits near there. So, um, so phase one, drop off a bunch of rovers at at least three different sites, go hunting around confirm that we can mine the ice, try drilling in the ice. Um, um, one of my favorite sites is shown here. There is a river basin that may have sand and gravel pre-sorted for you. There's a big ice deposit. It's about half a kilometer deep. So um, I think I mentioned this. So um, you can also use ground penetrating radar. You might want to do chemical analysis of the rocks so you can fine tune the equipment you're gonna send later. So, so, so pick a site and then start sending. Um, uh, you can also, so once you've picked the site, you can send um, prototype equipment. So for making um, methane and oxygen to refuel your starships. Uh, and also you can send prototype greenhouses, prototype habitats, uh, polymer pr production, um, and then land whole starships and build up the build up the equipment. So um, I think everybody knows that water is probably the most important resource that is available at some places on Mars, but not other. So um, anyway, so I so in the upper right, I'm hoping that you can drill multiple. Uh, water wells into an ice deposit and basically frack it. Pump hot air, possibly from a nuclear reactor, pump hot air down the middle of these wells, crack the ice and you should get water vapor up the outer wells, which then can be condensed. And it should be fairly clean, but you, you, you need to be prepared to, to do additional processing on it. Okay, so I meant, I keep mentioning polymer produ um, um, production. So um, on the right is a 
little test stand. It's, it's a prototype methane generator made by um, school kids at the Dallas and shown at the Dallas Mars Society Convention. If anybody out there knows these kids, I'd really like to have their names to give them credit. Um, from methane, you can make um, simple polymers like polyethylene for making, um, say, milk bottles is what we know polyethylene for the best. Uh, you can also use it in 3D printers. Um, also send prototype fabrication labs, uh, workshops. So here is a, a proposal that was originally designed to be launched on a Falcon Heavy, but you could launch multiple ones on a Starship. It would have 3D printers, water jet cutters, et cetera. Okay, but the Starship is, has other uses. I don't wanna just land a Starship, unload the equipment, set up the equipment and have the Starship leave. It is extremely valuable because of the volume within the Starship, especially in the fuel tanks. So let's keep the first few Starships on Mars after they have arrived and use them. Okay, so you can use them right side up. Um, on the right, you can see how a Starship might be um, configured for, for people living in it in orbit. You can do something fairly similar and just live in it after you arrive on Mars. And it can, you'd want a lot of, say, communication and uh, gear in it anyway. So a starship could be used as your control center, uh, your initial habitats. Um, it would be filled with electronics and, and power equipment. You would want to hang sandbags on the outside for radiation shielding. You can also use the fuel tanks for storing um, water, oxygen, and fuel that you've produced. Um, in the lower left, the, you can use the starships as a tower. You can hang cables from them. You can use them as antennas. Here we show a um, ha hanging basically a net filled with regolith dirt for radiation shielding. Um, have an airlock off to, well, well, have a door to one side. And it'd be big enough to, tr to uh, trundle an entire starship in under that. And you, can, uh, you could repair and refurbish a starship that is going to be returning to Earth if there was some problem with it. I am hoping we could get a little bit of air pressure in there to make it easier to work. That remains to be seen. OK, so um, there's a better view of the, of the hangar. Um, in the upper right, um, I have shown, uh, well, actually, Bart Leahy <laughs> helped with this one. Um, a bunch of steerable mirrors to make a heliostat. So you open the cargo door of the Starship and you can have exposed a number of different targets you want to heat up. So you'd first focus the mirrors on say, um, a steam generator, generate steam, run it through a turbine, generate electricity. You could move a kiln in place and center ceramics. You could move another chemical reactor in place and separate out um, oxygen from, carbon di from the carbon dioxide of the air and also have carbon monoxide as a side product. Carbon monoxide is very useful for some industrial processes. So um, um, another thing you can do is, um, it would be much more convenient to tip starships on their side using some kind of crane or derrick and out, have them outfitted on Earth before you leave Earth with at least some cables and tie points, maybe, maybe floors. You can make a very comfortable three floor living quarters out of a starship fuel tanks tipped on its side. Uh, what's shown here is a workshop on the top where they're repairing a little rover. A middle floor would have, be the main living space. Lower floor would be bunk rooms and storage. So, um, and as I said, you, you plan this ahead of time. Don't go out there, you know, with a welding torch after you arrive. Just, uh, just you know, have some of this installed ahead of time and bolt the rest in place. And the main um, crew compartment of the Starship up near the nose would um, be pre-outfitted for, for living quarters and can be used in, in route to Mars as well. So anyway, um, after, 
some of these pictures were, were borrowed from an earlier presentation. You can have an, a, an inflatable assembly tent where you can manufacture and, and wind fiberglass cylinders. I show a very large version of the assembly tent in the lower right, large enough to slide a starship in to, uh, to work on it. Okay, um, this is a work in progress. We, um, you know, we really haven't figured out the, the optimal sequence and we could use um, a lot of help if you want to join this team and, and work on uh, designing how to outfit a starship and what else to do with it. And if you notice on my right, we could really use some help with graphics. So, um, but anyway, on the right, it shows uh, about six starships turned on their sides with tunnels connected to connecting them together. You can make a nice little base there with a very large amount of interior space. The lower left shows sort of what it might look like. Um, cover it with dirt for radiation shielding. Um, I cannot see a clock. How much time do we have? So, okay. Well, I will go into other things. So this is- ten minutes left. Oh, 10 minutes, good. This is a, uh, it, it's, so some of the following slides are not directly related to starships, but have not been shown in more society convention. Here is a proposal for a canopy over a 100 meter wide um, city park in a future city. And um, the cables would be tied down into the ground, uh, much more effective than tying them down at the edge of a dome. Um, here is an elevator, a space elevator dropped down from Phobos. You can export goods and much, much cheaper using almost no fuel. If you have this space elevator, you can do a suborbital launch at half a kilometer per second, catch the bottom, and then using only, say, electrical energy, climb up to Phobos and then slide out to the top end of the elevator, let go, and you can head off toward an asteroid or, or back to Earth. Very little fuel. And it is um, it uses current technology. So in the lower right, there is a picture that I took of polyethylene braid in my hand. It's, it's basically kite string or fishing line, but braided together. Um, here are optional slides. Um, some masonry um, structures that we designed years ago, and I can uh, show them in, in, in small groups. Um, this um, was, by the way, picked up by Kim Stanley Robinson and incorporated into the Red Mars novel. So what you see on the right could be built on Mars, almost nothing brought from Earth, um, low technology except for, for pressure suits. This could have been built by the Greeks and Romans except for that pressure door you see in the bottom. Uh, here's a larger version of it. You can make them six stories high. Um, we've seen, we saw this before. This is a proposal where you would um, excavate dirt or sand, um, use a solar furnace to convert it into fiberglass or spun basalt, also make polyethylene, I'm sorry, polyester to bind it, wind it in that tent you see in the middle, bring it out and join it together. So if anybody would like to help updating this plan and show a few starships interspersed with it, uh, please contact us. Um, bear in mind, there are many different types and uses for greenhouses. I list about a dozen different factors for greenhouses, like you wanna stagger the harvest, you want different temperatures and pressure, um, different uses for greenhouses, including making biofuel. Don't forget that kind of stuff. Um, here's the chemical formulas. I thank Frank Crosman of the, he's been active from the Mars Society, with the Mars Society from almost the beginning. He's also um, is the archivist for Mars papers. So um, why don't we go to questions?